This is Mike with The 21 Report, behind the scenes in Orlando, Florida for the 21 Convention 10 year anniversary. I'm sitting alongside Richard Cooper from Entrepreneurs in Cars. Richard, welcome to the show. Thanks, man. It's good to have you here. And um, before we get into some questions, I was wondering if you could give the guys watching a brief overview of your talk and why you chose to speak about that. So my talk was based on 10 lessons that I'd learned in life. Uh, you know, quite often uh, success leaves clues and so does failures. So to help people, I guess, hack or shortcut um, their lives to become better versions of themselves, uh, I shared uh, 10 of the most powerful things that I thought would move the bar forward in their lives. Awesome. So when I, when I listened to your talk, there was two key moments that were al almost felt like turning points that you made in your life. The first one had to do with um, health and fitness and the way you described it was strengthening your body. If you could like paint a picture for us, what do your what did your workouts look like back in the day and what do they look like now? Well they're a lot different. I guess back in the day I was build strong, thick, dense, obvious muscle. Um, and I did that, you know, I went from 160 pounds to about 205 pounds at one point. Um, just became strong because I had the uh, mental block in my head with the scars that I had from burning myself with hot water um, that um, I had a very negative self-image of myself but I knew that I could change what was under the skin. Uh, today I'm 43 I'm not there to be the biggest strongest man possibly uh, possible but um, I train for injury prevention now so I work around injuries that I've had but I s still strengthen my body so I can be useful to myself and be useful as a man and a father to my daughter. And so the second turning point was something that happened, I think it was maybe le within the past year or so, was your kind of red pill awakening and reading the rational mail. You're a father, I wanted to ask how has your red pill awakening changed your approach to parenting, if at all? Um, I think I became more mindful in the sense that I wanted to be the strong, virtuous man that I wanted my daughter to be with when she got older sort of thing because I think that that's the, um, that's the bar that's set and she's not so much paying attention to what I'm saying but more to what I'm doing, like she's very observant. Um, so to me it's very important to set the groundwork, you know, the framework so that uh, she would consider pairing up with somebody of those virtues. One thing you mentioned um, about potentially if you were to meet another woman and she had a, a son and the dangers involved in that for your daughter, could you talk to that? Yeah, a lot of people don't recognize the dangers involved because they're not paying attention to the risks because nobody talks about them. But um, the greatest danger to a little girl in a household is a boy of the opposite sex, well, opposite sex but not of the same bloodline. Uh, there's pheromones in brothers and sisters that repel them from each other so they, you know, they're not interested in uh, engaging each other on a romantic or sexual level but they're absent when you bring, you know, if I were to bring a woman in my house uh, she were to live with me and she's got boys uh, of my daughter's age or older it poses a potential risk and as a parent you've got to be aware of that uh, you know, if you value your daughter and her place in society and how she's going to grow up I mean, there's a lot of girls out there with daddy issues that have been molested and, and uh, you know, compromised by men in their lives that, you know, ruin their lives today. Mm. And they let ruin their lives today. So another thing you mentioned in your speech was um, belief systems. So you do a lot of coaching. Um, how, if someone was to come with you with problems with their belief, their, their belief system, what's the first steps you'd take in helping them? Um, usually pointing to facts that are in their blind spots. Um, people are pretty aware of what's going on in their lives even though they might choose to ignore it but there's often things sitting in their blind spot that they don't necessarily notice. I'll give you an example. I had a uh, conversation with a, a coaching client on the phone the other day and his, um, his prospect and his approach to his breakup with his, his partner, with his girlfriend was I bought her the curtains, I bought her the car, I moved to the neighborhood she wanted to, you know, blah blah blah, fill in the blanks and she still went and you know, fill in the blank, it could be fuck the other guy, left me, whatever. And I was like, hold on a second, you need to understand the concept of relationship equity. You don't make deposits into this relationship where you can make withdrawals later on, for false law, right? You know, you're only mm -hmm. useful to the woman so long as you're useful to her sort of thing. So that was a blind spot. It was, it was a big awakening, like a big aha moment for him to hear that um, uncomfortable 
truth. Mm -hmm. um, and it's usually an asshole like me that has to point to it for them. Do you think that's enough, just the awareness, or is there something that needs to happen after the awareness? Um, well, there has to be action. There has to be, action, you know, it, there has to be intentional action taken on their part to become a better version of themselves. I can't make them better. It's not my responsibility to make them better. It's their responsibility. So um, I tend to do most of my coaching in one call. I don't look for recurring clients or recurring revenue. Mm -hmm. it's, let's, let's, you know, you got a problem. What is it? I basically open every single call with what is it that I can do today that'll be useful, mm -hmm. sort of thing. And you know, we dive into what their roadblock is, and I try to point to some facts so that they can remove that roadblock and they can move past it. Awesome. So. Richard, this was your first time speaking at the 21 convention. How has the event been for you? What's your experience been like? Oh, it's been great. I mean, there's people in the audience that could be on stage. So um, I've, I've said this before that if uh, you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. And I don't feel like as, as if I'm the smartest person in the room. Like I'm here to learn too, mm -hmm. as well to uh, teach. Awesome. Yeah, that's one of the great things about the 21 convention. It's the, the speakers like yourself, it's clear to see that they care about men and helping men become what Anthony calls the ideal man. Um, so before we kind of wrap up, Richard, could you give the guys watching at home a, um, if they want to learn more about you, where is it that they can go? Well, most of my work's on YouTube right now. It's at Entrepreneurs in Cars on YouTube. Um, and you can search the content there. There's close to 400 videos as of today's date, September uh, 2017. And uh, it's all free stuff, so you know, dive into that and you'll uh, find answers to things perhaps that you're stuck on. Awesome. So with that, you can watch Richard's talk first on 21university.com or by clicking on the link below this video. Richard, thank you again for being here. It's been great having you. Thanks, man. So this is Mike with Richard Cooper signing off for the 21 Report. Thank you.